All right, so ever since the 2018 iPad Pro came out with its bezel-less design, crazy specs, and most importantly, USB-C, the thing that everybody wants to know is, can you use this thing instead of a laptop? And I think that the short answer is yes, some people will be able to use this as their main computing device, but I also don't think that that's the right question to be asking in the first place. My theory is that Apple never really intended the iPad to necessarily be a laptop replacement, but a different device category entirely. I think that had Apple actually wanted to make the iPad Pro into a true laptop replacement, it would have been easy for them to take the same route as other 2-in-1 devices, like the XPS, the Yoga, or even the Surface devices. And they could have just put macOS onto a tablet and then called it a day. But the fact that they went through the trouble of developing iPadOS along with a whole new cursor system, which was probably very costly and difficult, says to me that they're going for a different approach. Again though, this is just a theory and I could be totally wrong, so just think about it. That's, that's all I'm saying. So that brings us to the Magic Keyboard. So first of all, I think the floating hinge design just looks so elegant and futuristic and I'm really just a big fan of the way that this thing looks. The only thing I can think to complain about design-wise is probably the Apple logo stamped onto the back. Personally, I think it looks a little bit tacky, but looks are subjective and you can make your own decision about that. While we're looking at the back, you can probably notice that I'm using this with the older 2018 model and not the newer 2020 one with the dual cameras and the LiDAR sensor. So if you have the older model and you were thinking about using it with the Magic Keyboard, you'll be happy to find out that they are compatible. And the Magic Keyboard definitely has some features that you won't want to miss out on. I think that the two main headlining ones that everybody's interested in are of course the new scissor switches inside of the keyboard and the trackpad. So naturally, I'll save them for last. Other than that, the Magic Keyboard features a new cantilever hinge design that makes it look like the iPad is floating, according to Apple at least. Like, I guess if you're looking at it from the front, it kinda looks like it's floating, but it's a stretch. I still think it looks really cool though, and I'm definitely still a fan of the design overall. One, because like I said earlier, I love how it looks, but also because I think it's incredibly functional. So on the old keyboard folio, you pretty much just had two options for viewing angles. But now with a new hinge design, you have much more freedom when it comes to where you want to position your screen. Particularly, I am very excited that you can now place the iPad at viewing angles less than 90 degrees. Which you might say, why would you need that? Why would you want that? And my answer is to watch YouTube in bed. And I know that some people watching this are probably going to judge me for that, but it is what it is. Because the old keyboard folio only supported viewing angles greater than 90 degrees, you wouldn't be able to see it if you had it resting on your stomach while you're laying down. And I know I'm not the only one who does it. So if you want to watch YouTube in bed, your only option was to fold the keyboard behind the iPad and then hold it. But now you can enjoy all the YouTube you want in your bed hands free. The only drawback about the hinge that I found though is that you lose the ability to fold the keyboard behind the iPad and then use it like a tablet. But this is a trade off I'm willing to take for the added functionality of acute viewing angles. And with the floating design, it's a lot easier now to take the iPad off the keyboard entirely. All you have to do is place a hand on the keyboard to keep it grounded and then the iPad comes right off. But that isn't to say that the magnets holding in the iPad are too weak. I actually think that Apple has done a really good job with the strength of the magnets because it's easy enough to take off when you want to, but it remains very secure during normal use. And last thing about the hinge, and it's not really a big deal, but the iPad will still wobble if you're using the touchscreen while it's on the Magic Keyboard, which is no different than the old keyboard folio. The Magic Keyboard also has a USB-C pass-through that will transfer power, but not data. And it's just a really awesome feature because it frees up the port on the iPad itself, and having it on the opposite side just has, gives you more options as far as cable management goes. And finally, we get to what we've all been waiting for, the keyboard and trackpad. So first of all, full disclosure, and I know that I am in the vast minority for this, but I actually like the old butterfly switches. Personally, I just really like the way that they felt, but I do understand that there was an issue with reliability. And even as somebody who liked the old butterfly switches, I still have to admit that 
the new scissor switches are pretty much superior in every way. They offer a good amount of key travel and they have a very nice tactile feel. In fact, I wrote the entire script for this review on the Magic Keyboard and I had a great time. It is missing an escape key though, but I didn't really find it to be too much of a problem. Every now and then I'll kind of forget that it's not there and I'll reach for it, but that's pretty much it. They also got rid of the cloth covering that was on the old keyboard folio, and I'm just really glad because I think that it made it feel kind of cheap and I just wasn't really a fan of it. The new Magic Keyboard just feels very premium and I think it really adds to the whole experience of using it. While there's definitely a lot to be excited about for the new Magic Keyboard, I think personally the feature that I was most looking forward to was actually the backlit keys. I use my iPad in the dark a lot and having the keys backlit helps tremendously. And that was probably my biggest complaint about the old keyboard folio, so I'm so glad to see that they have it in the new version. It also does a really good job of knowing when to turn on and off. After about 5 minutes of non-use, it'll, it'll turn itself off. And after you touch the screen or the trackpad or the keys, it'll just turn right back on. And just as a little bonus, the caps lock key now has an indicator light. This used to get me all the time because with the keyboard folding cases, you end up pressing the caps lock key on accident a lot when you're opening and closing them. And having an indicator light on the caps lock key just helps out a ton. And last but not least, this is the first iPad case to come with a trackpad. And with it, Apple came out with a whole new update to iPad OS and a new type of cursor that's in the shape of a circle to mimic the shape of your fingertip. And when you hover over an icon or anything, it'll kind of snap onto it. And for the most part, it works pretty good. It's just that sometimes it feels a little bit inconsistent and some apps don't really support it or some icons you feel like it should work on and it doesn't really work. But in that case, you just use it like a regular cursor and it's fine. The trackpad does feel a bit short though. I often feel like I'm running out of room depth wise with the trackpad. Width it's fine, but I kind of wish that they pushed the keyboard up a little further to make room for a deeper trackpad. But it's definitely usable and overall I feel like it's a very good trackpad. With the trackpad you also get access to gestures like swiping three fingers up for home or two fingers for scrolling, and overall it's just a really helpful feature to have. And I think that the addition of the trackpad is just a pretty good overall quality of life change because just raising your hand and, and kind of using it like this just makes your arms kind of tired after a while. And I know that's a definitely a first world problem, but it's true. <laughs> but I also wouldn't say that this is a real game changer functionality wise because everything that you can do on the trackpad, you, you pretty much could already do with your fingers on the screen. And yeah, not on the trackpad. So just to round this out, a lot of people are talking about how heavy this thing is. I still wouldn't say that it's heavy overall, and I think all the extra functionality that it brings it makes it well worth the wait. And I don't think I can make a Magic Keyboard review without addressing the big elephant in the room, and that is the price. This thing is not cheap, so for the 11 inch model you'll be paying $300 and for the 12.9 inch model, which is the one that I have here, you'll be paying $350. So I guess the $350 question is, is it worth it? But it's a little hard to say definitively whether it's worth it or not because what's worth it to me may not be worth it to you. And although it is still a very hard pill for me to swallow, especially when I consider that the mechanical keyboard that's sitting behind me right now was only half the price of this. But for me personally, I would say I think I got my value out of it. And yeah guys, that's it. So I try to be pretty thorough in this review and I hope it was helpful if you were looking into getting one of these. And uh, if you still had any questions or if there's something I forgot and you were wondering about, just uh, leave it in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Anyways, uh, remember to like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing my best to post content on a regular basis. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.